A patient like no other, escorted out of this private Palermo hospital, his cancer treatment now interrupted because the elderly man in the beanie cap had in fact been Italy's most wanted mafia boss for three decades. Matteo Messina Denaro. He disappeared from public view in the early 90s. The police had to guess at his appearance, allowing for plastic surgery. In the end, the projection was kinder than the real mugshot. Local residents in Palermo thanked the police. And wished the boss who'd embodied the mafia's potent mix of myth and malice good riddance. Dinara once boasted that he could fill a whole cemetery single-handed. In the end, there was two illustrious corpses that cemented his bloody legacy. First, the bombing of anti-mafia judge Giovanni Falcone, his wife and three bodyguards. The crater left by the bomb on the Palermo Airport Road was 100 meters in diameter. Two months later, Paolo Borsellino, the other prominent anti-mafia judge, was killed when his car exploded after he'd gone to visit his mother. What followed was a campaign of terror, unusually directed against some of the crown jewels of Italian culture. The church of San Giorgio al Velabro in Rome. The world famous Uffizi galleries in Florence. Outrageous acts that betrayed the mafia's panic over losing its political backers in Rome. Today, Italy's Prime Minister Giorgia Meloni went to pay her respects at the roadside monument to murder Judge Giovanni Falcone. It's a day to celebrate for us, and we showed that the mafia can be beaten. We haven't won the war against the mafia, but this battle was a fundamental one to be won. This is a real strike against organized crime. Dinara's arrest may be the final blow for the Sicilian mafia said by many to have been replaced by the Calabrian Andrangheta as the most powerful organized crime syndicate in Italy. For the families of the victims, finally a degree of justice. For Italy, the end of one bitter chapter. Well, earlier I spoke to John Dickey, professor of Italian studies at University College London and author of a number of books on the mafia. I began by asking him how big a fish Dinaro was. I think he was significant for uh, his past and he was significant symbolically, but I don't think he was a major player um, in Cosa Nostra today. I don't think uh, the significance of his arrest lies in the power he may have held at the moment. We'll, we'll have to see, but that's my opinion just at this stage. I mean, some of the other big mafia bosses, boss, boss of bosses that he worked with, like... Tortorina were captured a long time ago. Why did it take the Italian authorities such a long time to capture Denaro? Messina Denaro was not from Palermo. That's one of the reasons why he couldn't be boss of bosses uh, of Cosa Nostra, as some people suggested. He was from the province of Trapani on the western tip of Sicily. Um, so not at the epicentre of mafia power. And it may be that he escaped because when the sort of uh, uh, Cosa Nostra ran into crisis after the uh, violence of 92, 93, that he wasn't, um, he, he wasn't vulnerable in the same way that the Palermo bosses were when they uh, began to be arrested and the, their system began to collapse, rather. And, I mean, he is linked, amongst others, to, you know, the, the two most illustrious corpses of the Mafia at the time, uh, Judge Giovanni Falcone and Judge Paolo Borsellino, two anti-Mafia bosses blown up in the most spectacular fashion. That was the most one of the most violent things the Mafia had done in public, but it also illustrated the beginning of their end, didn't it? Yeah, that's right. The, the, this was the... Messina Denaro was the youngest member of what was called by the press the kind of massacre wing of Cosa Nostra, who had mounted a war on the state during the 1980s that culminated in 1992, as you said, with the murders of Giovanni Falcone and Paolo Borsellino, for which Matteo Messina Denaro has already been convicted for his role in, the, in absentia, obviously, for his role in these crimes. That was an attempt to get the state to back down in its slowly ratcheting up prosecutions and campaigns against Cosa Nostra. And it failed, ultimately. 
Um, so much so that all of those, that massacre wing of Cosa Nostra, uh, one by one has been arrested. And for a long time now, Messina Denaro has been the only member of that group still at large. And, you know, although he looks like a rather kindly old man with his beanie cap on today, escorted out of the hospital, I mean, he was particularly ruthless and brutal, wasn't he? And he once boasted famously that he could fill a cemetery single-handed. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, they, they think he'd, he'd, his career as a murderer had started when he was a teenager. And he was a close ally of Riina, who's thought to have been responsible for ordering around about a thousand murders. Quite how many of those he was directly responsible for, we may never know. It'd be very interesting to see whether he turned state's evidence. Do the Sicilian Mafia still have any political backers in Rome? No, not that I can. The last person I heard sort of ploughing the Mafia's official, plugging the Mafia's official line that, um, you know, the Mafia didn't exist and that sort of thing, and it was all an invention, was uh, Silvio Berlusconi's right-hand man in business, uh, Marcello Dell'Utri. Uh, but he has served time, seven years, I think it was, for aiding and abetting the Mafia. Uh, and even Berlusconi uh, announced today that he thought the state was stronger than the Mafia and congratulated the authorities. OK, got to leave it there. John Dickey, thanks very much.